the technical details of brooding. Um, technical is probably not the best word to use because it's a relational process. Essentially, what I do, the father showed me, and I've got teaching on this in the Engaging God program under the, the uh, cradle of life. And that's what the father called it. I was engaging with a group of people and we were in the father's garden and there were these golden gates and the golden gates opened and people walked through it. Now, when I went through it, the father said, I want to invite you into the cradle of life. And I thought, well, I've been into the cradle of creation. I've been into the chamber of creation, different things, but okay. So I went through the golden gates. I, I engaged and it was almost like a place of just absolute pure silence and awe really and I, and I i just relaxed there and just rested there and as i turned off all of my thoughts i began to feel the heart of god the desires of god and how that forms his thoughts about certain things and so brooding was me sitting there just contemplating being open to his thoughts his desires his intentions transforming me aligning resonating yeah, so i resonated with the frequency of those thoughts and it wasn't a, uh, a a process which was cognitive and i tried to figure it all out it was more feeling and experiencing and as I was just sitting there and sitting, like a, like a hen would brood over the eggs. They sit on the eggs, keeping the eggs warm until the time comes for the eggs, eggs to hatch. And then they sit on the chicks and keep the chicks warm. So there's this process in which what God's desires and God's intentions begin to form in us and we begin to resonate with them. So much so that literally what happened with me when I was sitting on there, I started to vibrate very, very gently, nothing violent, just very gently oscillating and moving and gently moving with the intentions of the father's heart. And literally it was forming in me and forming in me until I became in full resonance with that. And literally, I then became his thoughts. Now, how, then there was another process, a step. When I was in that stage, and, and I, it was no rhyme or reason of how long it took. It was whatever it took. Um, once I was in that state, it felt like I want to speak. You know, but, you know, I wasn't going to break the silence and solitude of that place and the intimacy of that place. So I sort of felt led to go to the sound the waterfall um with the sound of many waters and i would stand under the waterfall and literally my frequency um because the sound of many waters is the voice of god and literally i became the sound and then what i spoke or thought because it isn't always you know it was in in the realms of heaven it's not necessarily audible as in the same way on earth but my thoughts my intentions my voice effectively was then god's voice and then creation responded to me so the sense of there's a sort of process and i go through this process in the engaging god program in detail but then i engage in the chamber of destiny which is a chamber behind the waterfall which i've engaged for many years and then it's almost like my destiny is aligned to the voice of god or me being an oracle and i then engage the chamber of creation and literally light begins to move with the frequency of my voice and then that then has the opportunity of manifesting and depending on what it is it might take more than one person in agreement for a manifestation of something or it could be something very clearly around my lives and i'm brooding over something that the heart of god is for my life my destiny and then i see light begin to form into that shape so that can manifest as a reality in my life so that's really the process and that process can be quite quick 
in the once I am resonating, I can go to the waterfall, I can go to the chamber, but the outworking of it in the manifestation sometimes can be instant and sometimes it begins to form as my expectations for that begin to manifest it, if you like, over a period. And sometimes things need growth. They need to be, you're sowing a seed with light and then light sort of produces eventually the fruit of that seed. So different things happen in different ways. And sometimes things happen instantly and I've chosen realities. Um, and I've also learned to do this whole process within a sort of a, you know, I don't know if I want to go into this now, but in a, in a moment of time, so that that moment of time could be months. But I live in that moment, expand that moment to months, come back to that moment, remember the months, and then everything that's happened in that month then gets outworked as I rest in the reality that for me it's already happened even though i might not see it yet i already fully live in the fulfillment of it because i'm living in the contentment of what i've seen so lots of different things around that um, um and again sometimes you know god does it differently and sometimes i'm just in the light of his presence face to face in that light just being in that place of light and sometimes all the light just seems to weave around me patterns and it sometimes forms an organic shape and like i am malleable or bendable and i move into that shape and i'm conformed to that shape and i just know that in that place i'm in agreement with god's thoughts with his intentions and particularly when i do something in a group setting sometimes you haven't got time with a group of people to go and you know brood in the chamber of life for five hours or something so in that often i go and engage in the face to face in the light of his love in the light of his truth and then that shapes me and sometimes it's a it's a geometric shape that forms it's almost like a sacred geometric pattern and i then just sh are shaped into it and i just know that i know here's the father's intentions Usually when we do this as a group, we go and engage the father. Then we go and share what we've all seen. Then we go back and then outwork what we've seen. So normally then I just feel that I am already conformed to his desires and intentions. And then when we share that together, we all come together in agreement. And then we can then go and outwork his intentions within the earth shield or within the cosmos or in the gates and different things. So that's sort of how it works but it's a very relational process you know i'm i'm relating intimately with his heart and allowing his heart to change my heart into agreement with his heart and then i become his voice that that's really and then i can speak and release his voice and then creation responds and light begins to form that reality technically called popping a quiff um but literally my observation of the father's heart then enables me to choose the reality which is aligned to the father's heart. That's how all that works for me. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.